Hi, I'm Carol from the Crafty Whippet, and I am here with Floss Tube video number one. I dabble in mini crafts. I love to sew. I love to cross stitch. I love to knit, but better at acquiring stash than knitting, I'll be honest. That's probably true for all my hobbies, but cross stitch is the one I've been doing the longest, so in many ways it's the one that has my heart because I'm not looking to make useful items. When I sew my clothing, I'm making things that, no kidding, I'm going to be wearing later. So sometimes you get to the, I don't care, I just need it to be done, good enough. Cross stitch, I don't have to have any of it around. I, it's not a life skill for me. It's the making beautiful things because I like to look at beautiful things. I've been cross stitching most of my life. I learned in elementary school. Thanks, Mom. And it's been an interesting experience for me. When I was younger, all my stuff was acquired at... Pretty much local craft stores, well, local, they're all chains, but not any, this was before like Michael's even showed up in the world. It was like the fabric stores in town because my mom also sewed, so that's where we'd go and get all of our floss there, we get our patterns there. So most of my early stuff is very much in the, there's this old brand called Cross My Heart. I cannot find anything out about them on the internet. I have no idea why, but I remember those, I have at least two different booklets from them and they were like easy to find. I didn't have to go to an LNS to find them. They were just boom, these goods. And Leisure Arts have a number of Leisure Arts pamphlets that are still hanging around. I did some for my mom. I don't know where the patterns are. I kind of wish I did because they're really cute little birds. I'd like to do them again, but and I cross stitch all the way through college. It was that's when I first discovered the joys of the internet enabling my stitching habits. The old Teresa Winsler bulletin board, uh, as an aside, I have literally never stitched anything from Teresa Winsler. No particular reason, just never had. But that bulletin board was like a great resource for, this was 2002 maybe? Um, they were a great resource for expanding how I thought of my stitching. And that's when I ran into Mirabilia for the first time. And I was in love. We used, I had a little bit of birthday money that year, and I bought the Four Seasonal Queens. I had this mighty vision, and it was a beautiful vision. I was going to make all four. I was engaged to be married. We'd have them on the wall sometime, like, in the first five years of us being together. None of them are on my wall. Two of them are done, but I don't know what I was thinking and why I was so ambitious. I didn't really account for things like, oh, jobs. Yeah, the real world kind of had put a kibosh on a lot of my cross stitching and also children. So I love cross stitching. I've been doing it forever. I don't necessarily have a lot of finishes, mostly because I'm too ambitious. I start big projects and then get them done because it's a lot of stitches. With my cross stitch project, I've noticed there's an ebb and flow. Very much a big, the big flow is at the beginning. Ooh, I'm started, it's new, it's fabulous, let me work on this. To the exclusion of everything else, then I hit that middle point. And the middle point for me is about 20% of the pattern done, and I'm burnt out on it. I've been working on it nonstop since I began, and now all I see is everything there is to go, but the newness is worn off. So I stop. No, the problem with stopping is it doesn't stitch itself. But now I have all that middle part to do, and I don't get really excited again about the project until about 80% complete, at which point I get caught by a similar fever that leads me to start, that means me, I have to finish this now! The downside, if I'm working on something like a Mirabilia with beading, that 80% forgets that all the beading that's involved, so I'll get, I'll have all the DMC laid on the fabric, so all my X's are done putting beads on it, about halfway through getting the beads on, I'm over it. I don't enjoy beading. I hate dropping them everywhere. And I have dropped so many beads on the floor. It's not even funny. So I can burn out on that. It happened with me with Summer Queen. I no kidding had gotten all the way through about three quarters of the beading on it. Had 50, 50 or so left. And then the chains, I stopped and I put it down for two years. It was done. It was super done. And I just, I couldn't deal with it. I put it down. It took me an hour and a half to finish. That was it. I stopped short for two years for an hour and a half worth of work. <sighs> I hope everybody else understands that because 
I do this way more often than I should. So let's talk about my whips. I'm gonna only have three right now, which is manageable for me. I can actually remember where I am and it's two big projects and one little project, which is works for me. I find if I have too many little projects, I don't finish any of them because I don't tend to love little projects. They're just a way for me to refresh myself while still working in my craft. But if I do just big projects, like say I did just a rotation of my two big ones, I don't end up doing either one of them. It's too much because you feel like you're not making progress at anything. So my first one, Heartstring Samplery's Summertime Cublet. I picked this up at my LNS last year and I am doing it on Weeks Dye Works 36 count linen in the colorway linen. Whip number two is Winter Kiss by Adele Sessler's Charted by Hade. It is my first full coverage piece. I've never done full coverage. I didn't even know the existence of full coverage until I found it on the Facebook groups, I think two years ago. And that was a bad idea because I spent months stalking Heaven and I, and I really started with just Heaven and Earth Designs because they're the ones that I found the Facebook groups for first. I've since learned of other designers that are also in the same full coverage land. But anyway, I spent months stalking and I finally, one of these, they posted it. It was a new chart and it was at the same time there was a sale going on and I didn't say no. I ended up being buying three charts. I'm probably only ever going to do this one chart. And on honesty, like I love the look of full coverage, but I also find it never ending. My sense of satisfaction, the idea of, oh, I get to a page end and that's good. My current, my project is 48 pages long. Okay, cool. I get one page finished. That means I'm 2% done. That's not cool. My last whip is... Sabrina by Mirabilia. Picked this up at my LNS when I was picking up beads for Summer Queen seven years ago. Obviously, you can tell I think I'm gonna get projects done and I'm nowhere near done with them. And I started, I saw Sabrina and I said, oh, see ya Summer Queen, I'll deal with you later. I'm gonna work on this. And so I started it and did pretty well with it for a month or two and then I put it down and left it for five years picked it up did some more left it for another two years and we're working on it now uh, most of the skirt below really the top area that would be on the the chart itself is on two sides of the paper if if you've ever opened up a mirabilia there's you know, a giant square, usually half of it's the head's on one side and the body in the most of the dress is on the other side. I had really only done the side that had the torso, all the rest of the skirt, I hadn't even started. So all of that I've done in the last month and a half. And I'm not even working on it consistently because this is a piece for my daughter. So I can't work on it when she's at home, which is during prime stitching time. So I'm getting there, looking to have it done by Christmas. I think I can. Anyway, thank you so much for spending time with me and enjoying floss tube number one. I hope you'll be back next week for floss tube number two, where hopefully we can see some progress on each of these. I'm not going to hold my breath on winter kiss. I don't know if I feel like dealing with it. The weather got cold this week. A week and a half ago, it was up in the upper 80s kind of everybody whining, like, oh, when's summer going to be over? It's October, ready for it to get cold. Well, we skipped all the 70s. We kind of, so the 60s happened today, but we went right into the 50s. So it went from hot to cold. And that's when I remembered, I don't like being cold. I went from running the air conditioning one day to having the heat running less than 48 hours later. Not fun. So <laughs> the idea of a picture that has a lot of snow in it and winter and beautiful, I don't know if I'm on board with that right now. But the other two you should be seeing some good progress with and look forward to spending time with you. Thanks. Bye.